Good afternoon, everyone. This is TransConnect and February 2023. I am Dr. Mohit Chaudhary, and I'll be today discussing about polycythemia and approach to diagnosis. The topic that uh, the topic that I am going to cover will involve such some terms, and I want to make you aware of these terms. Uh, so, polycythemia and erythrocytosis. Polycythemia and erythrocytosis, of course, are used interchangeably, and uh, so that is what I am also going to do with. Some authors do believe there is a slight difference between the two, but I think you should, we can concentrate that on the on the main topic and uh, presume that polycythemia and erythrocytosis are the same. Coming to the definition of polycythemia, of course, uh, there are multiple definitions. There are a lot of differences, but the term that definition that we would like to use here is for males specifically, it is anything above 18 grams per deciliter and for female, it is 16.5 grams per deciliter. So that is the definition that we follow. Now coming to some specific terms that are very often used when we start describing erythrocytosis and polycythemia. One of them is relative polycythemia. So if there is relative, there is absolute. So what are these terms? So relative and absolute actually means in response to the blood volume. So when you have a blood volume, obviously some part of that would be plasma. Let's say 55% is plasma and 45% of that is red cells. So what if the plasma is removed, the whole plasma is gone. So that means we are left with just red cells. So instead of having a hematocrit of let's say 45% now, we have a hematocrit of 100%. But our RBC absolute mass has not increased. So it is like a hemoconcentration. So relative polycythemia essentially means it is a hemoconcentration. Compared to that, absolute polycythemia means that there is a increase in the red cell mass in absolute numbers. And when this increases, this leads to what is known as absolute polycythemia. The other two terms that are used are primary polycythemia and secondary polycythemia. Now, primary essentially means there is a genetic mutation that happens. And most commonly, the genetic mutation is jack, jack, jack mutation. And when that happens, there is, there is no feedback loop of erythropoietin, which is essentially uh, required to make the red cells. So when the genetic mutation happens, in spite of a low erythropoietin or low EPO levels, the still there is increase in the red cell mass. And this is known as primary polycythemia. The secondary polycythemia is different from primary polycythemia in the sense there is no genetic mutation. This could be in response to any infection or some condition where cardiac or lung involvement is there. So it can be both appropriate or inappropriate. Appropriate when the SpO2 or the oxygen levels is reduced and the body is trying to compensate it. Inappropriate when the oxygen uh, SpO2 levels although are increased, but there is some amount of uh, stimulus which could be through a tumor or some other conditions where inappropriately there is increased red cell mass. So now that we are well aware of these terms, let us talk on the algorithm itself. So this is the polycythemia algorithm. So we'll go step by step. This is how what I follow. And I mean, if it is helpful to you, you can uh, simulate the same. So first and four important, most important thing is that you need to know whether it is a relative polycythemia or an absolute polycythemia. So what are the conditions in which relative polycythemia may occur? Relative generally means when your body is having less of plasma volume and in uh, in these conditions, obviously your red cell mass may appear more than what it is. So it is relatively increased. And this happens very commonly in these conditions like dehydration or suppose exertional or non-exertional heat stroke. Sometimes we use a lot of diuresis, diuretics and the diuresis may lead to a relative polycythemia. And a very common condition where relative polycythemia may occur is burns. So you, keeping these in mind, once you have ruled them out, you actually move to a condition which is absolute polycythemia. So if it's not relative, it has to be absolute polycythemia. Now, absolute polycythemia can be further divided into primary and secondary polycythemia. When do you call a first with polycythemia, which is primary? So what you do is initial investigation you can do is see the erythropoietin levels. This is going to distinguish between the primary and the secondary. So if it is low serum erythropoietin, it generally points to primary polycythemia. If it is high serum erythropoietin, it is generally secondary polycythemia. So once you have low serum erythropoietin or low serum EPO levels, 
then you most probably are dealing with a condition known as polycythemia vera now vera means true and or real and polycythemia you already know is erythrocytosis so that is like a true red cell mass that is being increased so although the, there is low serum erythropoietin now erythropoietin or epo's job is to produce the red cell mass so it is not good doing that but still in spite of that there is an increase in the red cell mass and this condition is known as polycythemia vera which is a myeloproliferative neoplasm so obviously it is a neoplasm and you have some genetic basis on the same so that is there is a mutation in the jak2 this is a very important mutation and this is true to uh, this condition as well as a few more conditions where jak2 may come positive so this essentially concludes the diagnosis of polycythemia vera when you have a low serum erythropoietin and jak2 mutation that is jak2 v617f 95% of the cases of polycythemia vera you will have this jak2 mutation but you don't leave it sometimes this jak2 may come negative and then you need to do another mutation test which is a jak2 exon 12 mutation a few cases may also come positive in by this and this also concludes that this is a case of polycythemia vera now suppose you are not dealing with primary polycythemia and it is a secondary polycythemia so how do we diagnose that obviously there is high serum epo levels so once you have these high serum epo levels you want to check your oxygen levels to know whether it is an appropriate or an inappropriate response to the erythropoietin high serum erythropoietin but low spo2 so whenever there is low spo2 body is going to act on the same and try to produce the red cell mass to compensate for the low spo2 or increase the cardiac output so when there is low spo2 an appropriate response would be when you have a cardiac or a pulmonary disorder so, so the, when do you have this cardiac disorder can be some type of cyanotic disease or uh, when you have these right to left shunts but also in cases of conditions like eisenmenger syndrome where you have a, a left to right shunt secondary to pulmonary hypertension so this is a unique condition in which there may be increase in the red cell mass which is appropriate because the cardiac cardiac function is uh, cardiac is trying to the heart is trying to appropriately compensate for the low spo2 you can also have some pulmonary conditions obviously lung is involved here so the conditions can be any of these uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary diseases a uh, very common condition is obstructive sleep apnea sometimes uh, you may see that there are some chronic smokers who actually uh, have this carbon monoxide poisoning and easiest way to determine that is to go for a carboxy hemoglobin test even in high altitude it is the same mechanism you have a pulmonary compensation for the same and that is why low spo2 will trigger a red cell mass increase whenever you have on on the contrast if you have an ispo2 it is inappropriately you know the body still compensates still tries to make this uh, red cell mass and that happens especially in some malignant conditions such as carcinoma and there are various cancers that are implicated in these uh, uh, red cell mass increase these include hepatocellular carcinoma renal cell carcinoma hemangioblastoma and then there are some uncommon uh, cancers like pheochromocytoma and uh, uh, in in a few cases because of uterine fibroids as well although in uterine fibroids we have this uh, uh, bleeding episodes which can actually lead to anemia but sometimes these uterine fibroid can also lead to polycythemia so the easiest investigation to go for renal cell carcinoma is uh, ultrasound you can check an ultrasound or you can go for uh, for the other uh, carcinomas you can go for a ct head abdomen and pelvis to rule out the uh, malignant causes now in kidney diseases also sometimes it may because you know that erythropoietin is produced from kidney so there are conditions in kidney which may cause uh, these Uh, inappropriate uh, increase in the high uh, erythropoietin now when does that happen it happens generally in a polycystic kidney that is one of the conditions in which uh, you may or may have this uh, erythrocytosis or in case of uh, when a patient has a history of transplant uh, very uh, i mean in rare conditions you may see that after transplant uh, there is a post transplant increase in the red cell mass and this is known as post transplant erythrocytosis so history eliciting a history of a transplant is very important here the other uh, 
conditions where it can you know cause a problem is the exogenous sources when the patient is actually taking some anabolic steroids or uh, androgens or uh, some kind of an exogenous source of uh, uh, these uh, hormones and this may lead to uh, erythrocytosis so this condition is also not very uncommon especially for weightlifters and people who are doing these workout they tend to take these anabolic steroids and which may harmfully cause these erythrocytosis so just to revise uh, whenever we go for a polycythemia algorithm we need to first find out whether it is a relative versus absolute polycythemia once you have established it is absolute polycythemia you have to check whether it is primary versus secondary primary will have low serum epo levels with jak2 mutation secondary will have high serum epo levels once you have high serum epo levels you need to check whether it's appropriate or inappropriate appropriate you can see for cardiac or pulmonary causes because these are the ones which are directly affected here inappropriately if you see inappropriate high spo2 with high serum erythropoietin you should check for three things carcinoma kidney causes or exogenous sources carcinoma generally they are hcc or renal cell carcinoma or hemangioblastoma are the three common uh, tumors which may lead to erythrocytosis or you can also uh, have something like a pheochromocytoma or a uterine fibroid uh, very rarely then kidney causes it could be a polycystic kidney which may produce erythrocytosis or it can be a post -tran post renal transplant erythrocytosis of course you need to have a history or need to ask a history for exogenous sources like anabolic steroids or androgens if you have taken those hormones sometimes there may be an increase in the red cell mass thank you so much i hope you have understood the diagnostic algorithm for polycythemia we are happy to take any questions uh, regarding this and you can even suggest in the chat box if you want us to particularly take a topic for your uh, for your understanding thank you so much i hope it helps